Can pace reach Link's all-time high Mark's Cup and give us a realistic 30x? People are saying that this is the next Link. Now whilst they are different in their own ways, we know that in crypto it's all about narratives and attention, especially in a bull run. I've already done all the research for you and I've found some potential concerns you might want to be aware of. But ultimately, let's find out if this token is worth holding for the bull run. Okay, putting Pith into my spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is essentially the entire focus of my channel. I'm doing a public 10k to a million dollar challenge and I'm going to be doing that by researching a new gem every single day for the rest of 2023 and covering it right here. The main focus is on finding four to five gems and then holding them for long term and then selling them into Euphoria. No chasing short term narratives or pumps, leverage trading. That's not how you get rich in crypto. And this section is basically the foundation of my portfolio where most of my money is. How well this does will dictate how aggressive I can be with this part over here. So it's still important that I cover higher market cap projects like Pith for example. I don't see anyone else on YouTube doing this so if you want to see what gems I do find and end up investing into my portfolio, right now it's got 10k USDT, then be sure to subscribe and join my Discord, it's completely free. Quick overview of Pith, the price has actually pumped since I was supposed to make this video, but it's got 800 million dollar market cap, 1.5 billion Pith tokens are in circulation, and 10 billion tokens is the max supply. And of this 15% that is circulating right now, 6% was airdropped in the community to around 90,000 wallets. Now that's going to matter in one second. And in terms of the markets it's on, it's on most tier 1 exchanges except Binance. This framework is how I research every single altcoin. Everybody has their own kind of ways, but based on my experience and the amount of time I've spent in crypto, I think the most important thing is network effects and having a strong community. If you actually look at the highest market cap coins of last cycle, they were all coins that had insanely strong communities like Shib Army, Lunatics, Cardano, XRP, all of these coins in the top 10 had insanely strong communities. And that's the main thing that you really need to look for when you decide to invest in any token. So going forward, I'll use this framework to cover Pith and then I'll get into the tokenomics, which is where I have a lot of concerns. And at the end, I'll give you my thesis on whether or not this is a token worth holding for the long term. Full disclosure, I got airdropped Pith tokens, but I'm still going to be completely unbiased in this video. So let me just briefly explain to you what Pith actually is before I get into the main parts of the video. Pith Network is an oracle which publishes data to multiple blockchains. And if you don't know what oracles are, oracles basically provide data to smart contracts because without them, they wouldn't be of much use. In crypto, lots of applications depend on oracles to function properly. For example, features trading platforms, swaps, borrowing and lending platforms like Venus. And this shows how important oracles are. Venus lost 11 million during the lunar collapse because of an issue with Chainlink's oracle. And what essentially makes Pith different from other oracles like Chainlink for say, their entire architecture, their entire architecture is different. They're focused on speed first and foremost and they get their data directly from the biggest exchanges and market makers. So this is how the entire kind of process works. Binance will give data to Pith Network who will aggregate it amongst all of these people and they'll make it available for different decentralized applications like Venus to use. And the users of Venus each time they get data from Pith, for example, Bitcoin price, they pay a small fee and that's how Pith essentially makes money. So right now they're making around 60 sol a day, which isn't too much, but in the future you can expect this to grow. But as I'll cover in the tokenomic section, for me and you, retail investors, this doesn't benefit us at all. And this here shows how fast the oracle is. Other oracles take around 5 to 10 minutes to update the price, whereas they're doing it once per second. And because of their speed and quality of data, I can expect Pith Network to do really well in terms of gaining market dominance in the oracle space. If you go to DeFi Alarm, you can already see that. They're securing the second most protocols already and they're quite new. So going back to this, does it have a strong community? Right now it's far too early to tell because it was only released a few days ago. But what we can do in these situations is predict can a community form around this token. And for a community to form, I think really what you need is you need the holders to have something to believe in. And in my personal opinion, the main kind of narrative that Pith is already getting and is already being propagated in the space is is that it's a chain link killer. To me, I don't actually care if it is a chain link killer or not, if it's gonna perform better than chain link. All I care about is, are enough people actually gonna believe that for it to make an actual dent and be able to close this gap that it has with the link in terms of market cap. And in terms of gaining adoption, I think yes, it definitely will gain adoption and we've already seen it happen through with how many protocols they've got and also with Venus switching from chain link. They're now using Pith too. So yes, they will gain adoption. But ultimately, the main question you have to ask yourself is, can me and you, the retail investor in this token, the people who got the airdrops are looking to buy it, can we actually benefit from this at all? And 
Based on all the research I've done, the answer is no because the token is literally just a useless governance token. You don't get anything for staking it. There's no real demand drivers for it aside from speculation. But I'll take you through that shortly. Right now, we know that yes, it is a new coin. It hasn't really got low unit bias. And no, it doesn't have any value value accrual. But remember, every time you evaluate tokenomics, you have to ask yourself, who's got the upper hand? Who's your counterparty? Are you going to be getting dumped on or can you be the one doing the dumping? So are the supply and demand forces good? I've actually already written in my report that none. It's just a useless governance token. And the only thing that's really going to drive this token's price is speculation, which isn't entirely a bad thing, especially in a bull market, because that's really what they're fueled on. But when you actually look at the supply, this is where things start to go from mid to worse. So you can see here right now, it's got 1.5 billion tokens in supply and there's no unlocks until May of next year. So I'd say for us airdrop token holders, I would say in the next six months, we should be able to see some really nice price action. But for long term, I certainly wouldn't hold this token. And I'll just explain to you why. So in around six months, the supply is going to more than double to 3.6 billion tokens. And a lot of that is going to come from private sales protocol development and i'll just take you through what those actually mean so publisher rewards remember how i said binance bybit all these market makers provide data to pith they're doing that because in exchange they're gonna get pith tokens as rewards so there's a question of when they get these tokens over here and they unlock are they going to be immediately dumping i can't say for certain but i wouldn't want to bet against them not dumping secondly ecosystem rewards this is actually taken directly from their white paper and the key word here is funding. What does funding mean? It essentially means they're going to dump the tokens to fund the project. I don't want to hold any token where I'm going to be used as exit liquidity for them to improve their network. I want my token to work for me. Protocol development, this is just more things in terms of making the Pith network better. Community and launch, that was only 6%. So you have to consider the fact that there's not a lot of supply in the hands of the public and that's really what makes tokens do great if you actually look in most cases you see here the tokenomics of these tokens were really good and a large part of the supply was in the hands of many people and that's what you need you need lots of the supply in the hands of many people who truly believe in the project and what sell remember community a strong community means the people actually believe in the project people who believe in a project won't dump that means there's less supply here in the markets and then we've got private sales and VCs as well. So in almost every kind of category, you've got people who are potentially dumping on you over here. And let's say we're going to use the four year cycle theory. In May, in May of like 2025, the circulating supply is going to be 5.7 billion. Right now, the price is 50 cents. If the price, let's say we want to go for a 20x, if the price goes to $10, the circulating supply is going to be 57 billion. And as I, as, I, as I keep mentioning, it's really, really hard to be able to actually crack into that category of like 50, $50 billion plus. In fact, only six or seven projects actually managed to hit that. Now, I'm not, now I don't want to be too bearish on Pith because if that community does form and they form a rivalry with the link, then it can do really well. It's all about the community. If they get in a, if they get in a community around this token and it's like a cult, then yeah, sure, it can go to $50 billion plus. But in conclusion, I feel like the main kind of narrative for Pith is that it's a chain link killer and the entire premise of it is getting close to Link's market cap. So I feel like psychologically, in the minds of the market participants, it's always going to be bound by this upper upper limit here, which is the Link's market cap. What happens when, let's say, Pith does get close to it or flips it? What's the narrative then? And in crypto, you really would need people to believe in 100x's because if everybody believes in 100x, you can maybe still get a 30x out of it. You have to front run what the consensus is. And based on what I'm seeing for Pith, the consensus targets don't seem very high. People are target people are targeting like five dollars, which isn't which isn't too good at all. So just to finish off this video, I think for the next six months, I think the price is gonna do really well because it's a new token. It's got a lot of attention right now. It should serve as a Solana beta play, and there's no real supply here in the markets. But beyond this point, in terms of a long term hold, I certainly wouldn't be interested in holding through all of this. It really is actually quite aggressive, despite what some of the YouTubers are saying. And in terms of risk and reward in holding this token, I think as as time progresses, new coins are going to come out, which are going to take attention away from things like Pith. Those are the real ones that we should focus on. And I think on this channel, sooner or later, we're going to find something that has much better risk to reward than holding Pith long term. So if you do want to see what I find, then be sure to sub. And join the Discord if you want if you want me to look into something. Leave a comment, tell me what you think of Pith and, and let me know if you found any value in this video.